Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from XYZ Architect. I'm Marius and today we are going to finally talk about GDNT. But before going in that, we have to know what this standard means and how can it help us in our day-to-day -day work. So let's get right to it. Okay, everyone, so as always, I've put together a presentation uh, to better explain what I want to show you. So this is the introduction in GPS or GDNT. So according to ISO, we have the GPS, the Geometrical Product Specifications, and according to ASME, we have GDNT, Geometrical Dimensioning and Tolerancing. So the first step of a part being manufactured is the design. The part is being imagined as having an ideal form and most of the times is formed from simple geometrical surfaces like a sphere, planes, uh, cylinders, cones and so on. Dimensions and form are, are constructed perfect without errors and the, the surfaces are smooth, exactly like we can see here in this uh, image. Okay, but when the part is being manufactured, its surfaces and dimensions will be different from the ideal part. The profile and the aspect will be unregulated and the dimensions will be different from what it is designed by the designer. So here we can see the example of the part being manufactured. Of course it's exaggerated, but this is the real deal guys. Practically, the realized product will be an imperfect product. Because the errors mentioned above are inevitable in the manufacturing process, the customer accepts the imperfect product, but requesting that it has to fulfill the functional role. The way this is accomplished is that the, the errors have to fit between certain limits set by the designer and accepted by the customer. And this is where the technical drawings come into help. In the drawings, we can find specifications like the material that the part is made of, the mechanical limits, its weight, dimensions, and everything that the designer and the customer agrees on. So according to this drawing, if the part shown above right here uh, respects the specifications and is according to the limits from the drawing, then it should be okay and the part should be accepted by the customer. Okay, so there are three steps that we should take in consideration when uh, we think about GPS and GDNT. Okay, so the first step is the concept, the concept of the part and the geometrical specification. So as we said earlier, the concept is the nominal model with perfect surfaces bounded between them by perfect geometrical conditions and that has a perfect functional status. So uh, everything about the nominal part is perfect. Creating an imperfect or a skin model as it is also called, uh, going from the nominal model is in order to see exactly where the lower and the upper limits of the parts are. So these are the calculations of the tolerances and uh, the form deviations. This is how the mechanical designer calculates uh, what kind of limits should they put on the, on the drawing in order for the part to be fine and to be according to the uh, specifications from the customer. Okay, uh, 
Uh, translation of the last step with the help of the ISO or ASME languages in a way that is non-interpretable by all involved par parties. So this step is very important because when a mechanical designer do, uh, does a, a, a technical drawing, he has to make sure that everything is clear and that everyone is speaking in the same language. Okay. So step number two, the preparation of the process and product realization. In this step, the process engineer analyzes the functional specifications defined by the designer, suggests a process capable to assure the functionality of the part. So he is going to say what machines are going to be needed, what tools, what machinery is going to be needed and so on set the process he's going to set the process and see if the design needs new dimensions or specifications according to the new data from the real production okay so we have also the last step the control and the qualif qualifications of the product in this step the metrology, metrology engineer has to analyze the functional and dimensional specifications Construct a geometrical model for verification. This is the, the usually this is the measuring program of the of the part. Taking in consideration the measurement equipment available and the ask precision for from the drawing. So according to the drawing, we can see, uh, for example, what tolerances do we have? What uh, equipment do we need to use to measure the part? and make an acceptance protocol for each part. This is the report, the measurement report. Okay. ISO and ASME as part of the evolutionary process respond to better quality of the products and cost reduction for design and production. This is all for today, folks. Uh, please leave a like, share the information if you think it's useful and subscribe. Until next time, have a nice one.